So welcome, everybody. Great to see you here. Uh, are you ready to make some money with your copy? That's, what we're, that's really what we're here to do. Uh, as you guys know, if you are involved in writing copy, is that a little bit of copy can make a tremendous difference in your, in your, uh, the results of your marketing campaigns. There are other things that, that can make an even greater distance, but we don't often have direct control over them. Uh, the offer, your product, your price, your premium will be huge. And of course, the list that you're mailing to is also huge. But mostly, we have those things in place. Uh, copy is one of the things that we, we can, uh, we, that is a variable that we can play with. We have a lot of control over it as marketers, as publishers. And, uh, we can, and most importantly, we can test those things much more easily than we can test a new product or a new price or a new premium. So we can move quickly. We can try things, and um, so that's why we're here. Um, I just want to give you a quick uh, update on, or, or a bit on my background. For 35 years, I published newsletters, and then uh, as the marketplace changed, we moved into digital products, databases, um, uh, webinars were huge. We had a daily online trade journal for which we sold advertising and, uh, and did uh, lead gen for our for ourselves and for our uh, for our clients, our advertising clients. So, uh, and I, I did that until about a month ago, and we just sold our business. And uh, during the time that I was uh, publishing in the early days, I also did workshops for other uh, publishers on uh, editorial content and on marketing and copywriting. And uh, I also created a number of uh, direct mail packages and digital uh, advertising for uh, other publishers. In addition, I did almost all of the copywriting for our company and brought in over those many years about $70 million in, uh, in results and sales. And we were very avid testers, so we were testing over all that period of time. And over that time, came to a pretty good understanding of what works and what doesn't. What I want to present to you today are some, uh, a number of rules that I think will help you increase your uh, results. So with, with all of that, uh, let's go ahead and, and get started. So why does most direct response copy fail, or if it doesn't fail, to fail to realize its full potential? One is, I find when I'm working with clients and also working with myself that we, we get to, oh, got to get some copy down. We just put it down on the page, and we aren't really thinking of what we're really trying to do. We don't think about that person on the other end of the, of the email or the person who's going to visit our website and really think about the profound reality of that person. And so we're just doing the job, getting it done. The thing is, do it 20 minutes, boom, 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 and get it out. So we forget about really what we're doing. We fail to grapple with it. We're not focused. It's often hit and miss, and I, I, I am signed on to a lot of people's uh, emails, publishers and content providers like you guys, and uh, I find that for some uh, content providers, half of the emails are pretty good, and half of them miss the mark completely. So there's a, there's a consistency problem. So some people are capable of doing it sometimes, but not doing it all the time. It's kind of like being a one-hit wonder. If you can do it, if you can do it one time, shouldn't you be able to do it right do a good job all the time, dramatically increase your chances. That's what we're going to talk about, is how to increase your win percentage. And then uh, we don't follow the copywriting commandments. I just wanted to say a few words. I'm going to give you a number of commandments. We're going to cover uh, subject lines. We're going to cover headlines. We're going to cover copy. And I'm going to give you the best rules that I've learned for ensuring that those elements of your marketing are consistently great and move people, really move people to act. Um, I, was, I was talking to a, a colleague, I was in the, our business was in the public relations realm, our marketplace was PR people, corporate communications, and I was talking with a, a very famous um, crisis communications expert, and we wanted him to speak on a, at a webinar of ours, he had spoken many times, but we wanted to do something new, and I said, this guy's Jim Lukashevsky, and I said, Jim, what are your clients, what new things are your, do your clients come to you for? What new and different thing can we, can we uh, do a webinar on? And he said, you know, that's hard. It's just the Ten Commandments. 
And what he meant was people are, the sins that people commit are the sins they've been committing since Mount Sinai, and they continue to do the same thing, and that's why he has been in practice for, for 50 years, is because people do the same things wrong. Um, I'm gonna give you some commandments. The key is not the commandments, but following the commandments. That's the, the big challenge. I'll get into that a, a little bit. I've been thinking a lot about it. How is it that I give people, my, give my clients uh, commandments for this, for headlines, for subject lines, and I come back three months later or I have them, I subscribe to their emails, and they're still doing the same thing that they did before I gave them the commandments. I, well, you feel like shaking, what's wrong with you? It's because it's a lot easier to read the commandments than to follow them, okay? It's a lot easier. I, uh, I was a tennis player for many decades, and I spent so many thousands, tens of thousands of dollars on tennis pros. And you know, they tell you early racket preparation is a basic skill. It's, <laughs> when that ball is coming at you, it's so hard to get the racket back. It's hard to integrate it into your, into your workflow, into your practice, and into your, into your mind so that it becomes second nature. Uh, of course, you know, uh, you, can, you can go to the copywriting church every Sunday and they will, and, and you can uh, be, be reinforced. You can say the, the commandments like a litany uh, at once a week. You can check your copy, check your subject lines against the commandments, which is really probably the best way to do it. Check your headlines, check your copy on a regular basis. Make, that, make the commandments part of your workflow. That's my, that's my clue here. I'm gonna give you a couple of other hints that uh, I've come up with. So the greatest commandment of all is thou shalt always offer a benefit. And I'm gonna show you some subject lines and some headlines and I'm gonna ask you whether these are good headlines or bad headlines, good subject lines or bad subject lines. And um, it's interesting in a group this size that I al always get people who th thinks uh, bad headlines are good headlines and good headlines are bad headlines because th there seems to be a disconnect about what is a benefit. So well, I've, got a lot of, uh, I've got a lot of ground to cover here so I could ask various people in the room, what is a benefit? Let me, let me tell you what I've, <laughs> the conclusion I've come to. A benefit has one of two elements for our purposes. A benefit has an emotion, is an emotional reward, makes you feel great, all right? Makes you feel really good. It has an emotional element. So if you can say that about your product or about your, whatever you're advertising in your email, makes you feel something good, you're, you're on your way to a benefit. And the second thing is a tangible reward. It's gonna do something, it's gonna make a difference in, your, in somebody's life. It's gonna put more money in their pocket. It is gonna save them from prosecution. It is going to uh, help them achieve better direct marketing results. These are all tangible benefits. All right, that's what a benefit is. Well, what, what is a benefit not then? Because this is, often screws people up. Benefit is not information. A benefit is not learning something. A benefit is not news about something. Those are not benefits. These are false benefits, okay? Because they don't have an emotional reward. News doesn't have an emotional reward because it depends what the news is, okay? News in itself doesn't do it. Uh, we bring you news on the industry, not a benefit. There's no emotional reward to that. There's no tangible, doesn't make a difference in your life, okay? so. When we talk about benefits, this is my, this is my big insight uh, for you today that I haven't shared with anybody else. I've given this presentation quite a few times, and I think that that's been a disconnect. So I offer you that definition of what is a benefit. All right, how to find your benefit. This is one other one that, so this is an obvious one. Your benefit is either gonna be fear or greed. Okay, so when you look at a subject line, when you look at a headline, you wanna say, and before you even start to write the headline, and before you start to write the um, uh, subject line, before you write your copy, you need to know which side of the, of the divide your product is on. Now some products have, uh, have fear as a possibility and greed as a possibility. You, you're gonna be much better off if you pick one or the other, and, it's, and of course you're much better off if you pick the right one. So this can be discovered by testing. You can test various approaches. 
for most products, it's, it's obvious. For some products, it's not. Once did a marketing test, two different envelopes, and one was, uh, one was the, all about the art of management, and the other one was the fear of getting fired. Okay? It's hard to say, this is, this is a, management, uh, a management publication. Well, it turns out the fear of getting fired or the fear of looking bad was the, was the winning package, not the, not the exalted art of management. But you don't know that necessarily, right? It's hard to say what, what that one should be, so you're gonna have to try it. But it, but, it, but it will be one or the other, okay, for most products. You'll be able to tell. All right, so a powerful tool for starting your copy platform, it's what I call the igniter, all right? The igniter is, it's an open-ended question that you would ask, it's, another way to call it is an elevator pitch, some people call it, all right? This is, but it is an open-ended question that you would ask somebody, and within the question is the promise of the benefit contained in it. So I'm gonna give you an example. So what if I told you I could increase your response rates by 25% just by adding one word to your subject lines? And by the way, it's a true promise. I can tell you one word that will increase your subject lines, by, that increased our subject lines by 500% using one word in the subject line. Any questions? Yes, Jim, what was it? What's the one word? You want to know? You guys are so quiet. Absolutely, thank you. Video. The word video in our subject lines increased response by 500%. Now, you have to have a video in the, in the email. Uh, by, by the way, that was both opens and click-throughs. So it was, it was killer. Um, Okay, so uh, a couple of other examples. Um, John uh, will recognize this one back in the back of the room. How would you like to increase tax, de tax deductions on your 2014 tax returns by $17,700? How would you like to increase your tax, your tax deductions on your 2014 tax returns by $17,700? Okay, that is an igniter. You're in the elevator with somebody you ask them that question, and, and what they're likely going to say is, that sounds great. How do you do that? Okay. Uh, another igniter is, how valuable would it be to cut your S... So this is for banks. How valuable would it be to cut your SBA loan defaults by half? Okay. Very tangible, open-ended question. And we use, this, we use the Igniter on our, with our sales team, actually. We also started incorporating it into a lot of our advertising as the subhead uh, underneath for our webinars, particularly. Um, so uh, if you do an Igniter before you write your subject lines, your headlines, and your copy, you're going to be well on your way. You're going to be in the zone, okay? You're going to be in harmony with with a powerful message. And then when you write the subject line, the subject line has to, has to be true to the benefit, it has to be fear or greed, and it has to pay off the, the igniter, right? You're gonna ignite interest in something. It does not ignite interest in, a, in your email or in your, in your product if you say, how would you like it if I gave you all the news about the banking industry in a daily, Newsletter. I, I don't know. What, what, what would that be like? Is, is, that, is that a good thing? What would be the benefit of that to me? They're not going to read that email. They're not going to read the email. Okay. So, um, yeah, good. So I mentioned we're going to discuss. We're going to discuss subject lines. We're going to discuss headlines. We're going to discuss copy. By the way, you know, I, I know it's four o'clock. It seems like a sedate crowd here today, but please, if you have a question, raise your hand and let, let me know. And if you want to argue about it, I'm happy to argue with you too. So, so you may be right. Um, okay, so the first one is the subject line should be short. We've heard a lot, if you heard uh, Matt Bailey's presentation this morning, there are all kinds of theories on, on the length of subject lines. 
I don't actually care how long the subject line is. I think they should be about 100 characters. I try to stay in within that. But 100 characters in most browsers is going to be off the, the read. You're not going to be able to read those last 40 to 50 characters. You're not going to be able to read them. So I still don't think it's a bad thing, if you, but you've got to hook them in the first 50 characters. So. Your first three to four words are the most critical, so you have to ch choose them with extreme care to achieve as many of the following objectives as possible. Okay, so this it, it puts a, it's almost like, you know, it's a lot harder to write a fantastic, great poem than it is to write a, a short story. You know, because it's so compressed, and that's what the job that you know writing subject lines is the poetic equivalent. Or the or the writing equivalent of writing a poem. It has to be so compressed. You have to think about those words so so carefully. So what are those? Your audience has to be implicitly or explicitly telegraphed by your use of hot button industry words. If your you know if your FDA reports, you you've got to use something about the, you know FDA is a good nice short food and drug administration. Uh, you, you have nice shorthand. My industry was public relations, so we could always use PR gave us a very short way to express the industry. But there, you know, there are other things. So uh, real estate, taxes uh, for the tax reduction letter, uh, media, uh, AIDS, what, whatever your topic, you've got to get that in there. Um, Danielle, I, uh, you, you gave some examples for, um, for a CFO for a client, and I think it was on human resources. It was hiring, right? And I think you guys did had CFO right in there, and, and human resources or hiring. CFOs hire. That's what that that's what that offer was all about. So you got those those keywords up up in front, and then um, uh, use words that speak to your prospects' known problems or hot interests, penalties, a new cure if it's medicine, lawsuits, particularly avoiding lawsuits, saving money, making money, making your job easier. So already you got a huge job to do within the first three to four words. It's not easy, but it can be done. We're going to see some uh, subject, we're going to look at a lot of subject lines that do the job, and we're going to look at just as many that don't do a very good job. Make your proposition very specific if you're if your promise is effete, they will delete. So it has to be, t remember, tangible rewards. By the way, I see somebody taking uh, pictures. Not allowed. No, I'm just kidding. You can take pictures, but uh, if you would like a copy of the entire presentation with all of this codified for you, bring me your, um, bring me your business card, and I'll, I will send it to you. And I believe it, it is also available, or will be available, on the, um, on the SIIA uh, website, so you can download it as well. But I'm happy to send it over. Um, so use provocative language, stir things up, and this is where we're getting in, into a little bit of the art of of uh, copywriting, the art of subject lines. But um, it's worth giving it a try. If you know that you have to come up with provocative language, you will, you can do it. So what do we mean by that? Magic words, magical, amazing, announcing, astounding, how to, introducing new secrets, and intriguing words, the art of, danger, exposing, extraordinary, fight, fraud, negligence. Um, my first job as a copywriter was working for the King Size Sleep Shop. And um, uh, there, the, when I arrived there, the best-selling ad said, so this is King Size Beds, and their best-selling headline was, Sick of Sleepless Nights. Sick of sleepless nights? Question mark. You know, sick. You know, it's not a it's not a word that you see in headlines a lot, but it it had a good hook. And so I was trying. I worked for months trying to equal that. And so I came up with awake feeling rotten. You know, it's it's hard, harsh language, but it sticks. It's got a hook. Um, it's got uh, the the um, what do they? Uh, David Ogilvy calls it the. The, uh, something like the barb of the of singularity, but it's it's so unusual that you you stop on it and it hooks you. Um, lead with urgent news. You know, news always sells, but it's got to be news serving a benefit. Okay, uh, new way to cut utility costs. Well, that's that's pretty good. 
uh, use numbers to provoke uh, interest, five new ways to cut your utility costs. Uh, five ways to, 12 top experts, three greatest mistakes. We have looked at thousands of emails, uh, email subject lines, and I can tell you when we use numerals, especially the numerals, we usually do not spell them out anymore. We use the actual numeral. All of those uh, subject lines are up at, toward the top of, our, of, the, of the list of best, most opened uh, emails. So those are the nine subject lines, subject line commandments. Any questions about those? How much sense does this make? Does it make sense? <laughs> thank you. Who's my fan? Oh, thank you, thanks. So I'll have your check ready for you when, when the presentation is over. All right, so let's look at some subject lines. When FMLA gets tricky, these are real, these are real subject lines right out of my inbox. Good headliner, a good subject line or bad subject line? Woman in the, in the chartreuse sweater here, right here. Good headliner, a good subject line or bad subject line? I'm sorry? No, no, I'm asking this woman right here. Chartreuse. Isn't that chartreuse? Green? <laughs> bad. Thank you. It's a bad headline. Look, even if you're in the uh, human resources uh, field and you know what FMLA is, Family Medical Leave Act, uh, there's no benefit when FMLA gets tricky. Well, uh, how to save your ass when FMLA backfires on you or something, that would be a benefit. This, is, this has no benefit. This is a large publisher that, that did this. This is a publisher that ought to know better. And you know what? They do know better. But they didn't do it here. All right. Implement this one thing and watch your list grow. I just got this a few days ago. Bad. bad. And what, and, but why is it bad? All right. What's the benefit? Your list will grow. Okay, that is a benefit. You may not think it's the greatest benefit, and I don't think it's the greatest benefit either. But at least it has a chance here. So I would say I, I think you're overly harsh on this one. I think it has a little bit. It's trying to offer a benefit, and it has a little bit of intrigue. Implement this one thing and watch your list grow. It's not great, but it, there's something there. Need a California-specific handbook ASAP, here you go. Good subject line or bad subject line? Man in the uh, bad headline, bad headline. There's no benefit, no benefit. Not even the hint of a benefit. Why would I, why would I need a California-specific handbook? A California-specific handbook about what? What are we talking about? What is the realm that we're in? Doesn't identify the audience, okay? Sometimes we're so close to our subject, we just think, oh, uh, it's, a, it's the only California-specific handbook on human resources or on employment law in California, right? Create measurable objectives using the SMART system, 1213 workshop. Good, good subject line or bad subject line? Woman with a striped uh, sweater on, the gorgeous striped sweater. Bad headline, and it's a bad head, a subject line because no benefit. You don't know what the benefit is. It's trying, but it's still, you know, it's like, it's binary. It's either a good headline or a bad headline. It either offers a benefit or it doesn't. It's kind of trying. There's effort going on there, but they're not locking in on the main thing that's going to make it a good headline, which is what's the benefit? Exactly. Exactly right. Create measurable objectives. Is, why is that good? What is the benefit of an, a measurable objective? I don't know. And I'm going to use the SMART system. It, it's probably not a dumb system, but I don't know why I would want to use a SMART or a dumb system to, a, to create measurable objectives. Are you as profitable as your mortgage market peers? No, the woman in the back with the black blouse on. What's that? 
no, no direct benefit. It's kind of, again, you know, it's not, uh, it's not a mindless subject line. It just doesn't focus on the one thing that would make it good, which is what is the benefit. Bring insight to your invoice management process. Uh, woman right here with the computer. Good headliner, uh, subject line or bad subject line? You're not seeing a benefit? She's not seeing a benefit. I don't see a benefit either. The, you, are, you guys start looking at your, email, your subject lines when you, when you get home tonight, when you look at your email, and just look at all the ones, the commercial ones, and ask yourself, which of these subject lines are good and which are bad? And you're going to find 90% of them are bad. And it's not that hard to write a good one. All you have to do is follow the rules. How to handle an angry employee, six tips. Good subject line or bad subject line? Woman in the back. Exactly. All right, so she said it all. It's got how to, which is one of the magic word, magic phrases. It, uh, it, tell, it tells you something that, uh, how to solve a problem that a lot of us face, an angry employee, and it's got six tips, six tips. It's, a numer it's got a numeral. I want, do you, do you see, you know, when you, when, when you write a good subject line, we all kind of, even, you know, we probably all dealt with angry employees or problem employees, you kind of want to know what's that about? I've had that problem. You know, I've had that problem. Six tips, I wonder what they are. It's not two tips, it's not a bunch of tips, it's six tips. I want to know what they are. I'm intrigued. Keys to driving traffic to InnoData's site. So InnoData would be a personalization plug, all right? So it could say to the SIIA site or to your company's site. So keys to driving, and we might even improve this by saying seven keys to driving traffic to InnoData's site. Um, who, uh, woman with the camera, uh, good subject line or bad subject line? No, but, but it would be your company. It would be your company name. So it's personalized. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. So, you know, um, uh, when you personalize subject lines, your response goes way up. Okay, it does. And so I didn't mention it in my rules, but uh, for a lot of people, uh, most, and in, in fact, many, many of our lists, uh, we were unable to do first name or, or last name or company name because uh, a lot of them were opt-in and all we had asked for was, a, was a, a, uh, an email address, so we didn't do a lot of it. But from our customer list, when we're only working with our customer list, we could do it. And we, um, and we did do it, and we saw a dramatic lift in response. So if you're working with a list where you have a, just even a first name, but a first and last name, or, and or a company name, uh, you can uh, inc increase your response. Of course, you want to couple it with the, other, the rest of the commandments. What every employer must know to avoid costly lawsuits. Good subject line or bad subject line? Man at the back of the room. What every employer must know to avoid costly lawsuits. It's good. It's good. It's got to, it makes a promise. It solves a problem. Uh, it, it says employer. If I'm an employer, I'm going to know you're talking to me. I'm going to avoid costly lawsuits. It's it's a it's a good one. Tips to be more productive and a less and to be a more productive and less stressed employee in 2013. New book, sales success now. I swear to God, it's a real subject line. So, it's long. It's very long, and we would probably never get to the end of it. But it says tips to be. Let's just say we saw only saw tips to be a more productive and. Good headline or bad head, uh, subject line, and, and why? Why do you think so? All right, woman back here at the other at the back table. Say the last part again. I fell asleep before I got 
<laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the other thing about this one is it's kind of confusing. It's like, what's going on here? Like, you're going to become more productive and less stressed, but it's about sales success. I mean, it's like maybe those things have something to do with each other, but I don't know what it would be. So I'm confused. It's Yeah, salesperson, yeah, I mean, we could start there. But, but if, I ha if I'm doing sales success now, I think what I would rather promise is, you know, increase your sales by 25% over the coming 12 months. Yes, I, I want to do that. Probably more than reducing. I don't mind the stress if I'm making a lot of money. All right, 10 commandments for headlines that make people want more. Some of these are uh, overlap and are similar but I don't mind repeating them because so many people don't follow them. So, all right, offer a strong benefit, make a big promise, make a big promise, the biggest promise you can. That means a, a, the greatest benefit that you possibly can. How would you like, to banks, how would you like the security of knowing that the federal government will never withdraw its SBA loan guarantees? from your bank. You would like the security, right? Security is an objective thing, but it's also, the, it's a fear thing, or it's a, a security thing. Yes? Well, th well thank you. But what? Yeah, so l let's just say this. My, my, uh, my commandments here are, uh, I have to stipulate all other things being equal. Now, uh, the, uh, the, the client who uh, I've worked with uh, is in the banking area, the SBA loan, is Col the Coleman Report. And uh, Coleman, over the years, has developed a very credible name in that arena. And so the from is Coleman Report. If you don't know it, you know, and, and that's true with a lot of subject lines. Uh, other people uh, today and yesterday have talked about the from line and, and all of that. Uh, we also find, frankly, though, notwithstanding the correctness of your observation, we found that sometimes putting a personal name, somebody from our company, it comes from Jacques Gautreau, and it bumps up the, you know, it's a sales line, but you don't know who Jacques Gautreau is. It's, it occasionally bumps the response, so we would do it on occasion, kind of a wild card, but you're getting into, you're not following the rules. In tennis, we call it a low percentage shot, right? You want to take the high percentage shot. You want to go, if the ball's coming cross court, you want to hit it back cross court. You don't want to change the direction of it. Low percentage shot. So we're gonna, what we're talking about is high percentage shots to ensure that you always consistently get the highest possible response. Identify the solution. You know, you can't always do this in a, um, you can make a promise in your subject line, but you can't tell what the solution is. You, you're trying to intrigue them enough to get into it. Where am I going to get the six tips? You say there's six tips, but what? Six tips from who's giving me the six tips? That's your chance to say who, who is giving it, what it is. It's a, it's a uh, white paper or whatever it is. That's going to, um, uh, and, and the headline is really where you want to do it. The audience should be implicit. Again, you, they need to know who you're talking about. Uh, it should be in your headline. You use a verb, a strong verb, and is is not a strong verb. The verb to be is not a strong verb. So you want something that, you know, um, you know, you know, avoid avoid high penalties. You know, save money. Um, uh, six ways to boost. You know, use verbs that are going to, uh, that, that have energy in them. Create drama, provoke interest. And by the way, uh, don't have time to go into all of this, but what creates interest is people. And what creates the most drama in, in advertising is something when I'm the person, when the subject of you, the person you want to sell is the subject of your advertising. Okay, make your advertising about, I think we have a rule here, uh, that it should be about, the, your advertising should be about the other person. So build 
build on news or newness if you have it. We don't always have it. Use the magic words, I won't repeat them again, but uh, you know what they are. Deadline was one that we didn't have. Entice the reader to lure her on the headline. You're not gonna sell this on the headline, so you, you wanna make it such a, a strong promise, just like with the igniter, so that the, the person is saying, well, how do you do that? How do you do that? I wanna know more. The promise is so big and it's so credible, and I want it so bad. And you know, uh, in, the, um, in the realm of um, you know, investment advisory newsletters, some of those, uh, you know, everybody says that um, all, the, all the pundits, <laughs> all the uh, marketing pundits, and I've heard several people say it here, is the copy has to be short. Well, not necessarily, really, not necessarily. We've done tests on long copy versus short copy. Um, we've had, the worst we've ever had is a tie between the short copy and the long copy. But usually the long copy wins. Now it depends what you're selling. If, you're just, if it's just a, uh, you're giving away a white paper or you're giving away a webinar, free webinar, fine, short copy. It doesn't, doesn't take much copy to give away $5 bills, you know? And it doesn't take much copy to give away a free seat at a pretty good sounding webinar that has lots of promise, that follows the subject line rules and the headline rules, makes a big promise, has great copy. Fine, I'm gonna come, it's, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sign on. Now we also know free webinars, a lot of people don't show up who sign on to them, but I'll at least come along. But if you wanna sell somebody something, if you wanna sell somebody something, they wanna know why they should buy it. They wanna know the reasons. And short copy is not gonna cut it, it really isn't. So I would just say anybody who tells you that short copy, you know, for digital advertising, the copy has to be short, I don't believe it, I don't think you should believe it. I think you should ask yourself, what am I trying to sell? You know, when you wanna buy a $500 something, you are not gonna buy it with this much copy. I swear to God, you are not gonna buy it. And you never have bought it. You've never spent $500 when you read that much copy. No copy is that powerful. Even if they tell you, you know, you spend $500 with me, I'm gonna turn that into $50,000. That's a big promise but then you get into the credibility thing. I don't believe it. You have to explain to me how you're gonna do it. I'm not gonna send you, you write this much copy and promise me $50,000 for my $500 investment? I've been around, I'm not gonna do it. Make it easily understood, would your grandmother understand it? You know, the old grandmother test. And um, avoid negatives. They're often missed by hurried readers. I, I just don't like to put the word no or not in a headline. Uh, because you read over it, and, and you, if you miss that one little word, uh, you, you give people the opposite message that you want to. So I, I try to avoid it. I, if I'm gonna put it in there, if I must put it in, I underline it. I put an underline on it, so it pulls the eye to it. Okay, let's look at some headlines. Video storytelling with the pros, creativity on a deadline. Um, good headline or bad headline. John, would you give me some support here? Good headline or bad headline? Video storytelling with the pros, creativity on a deadline. Bad headline. Thank you. It's a bad headline because there's no... There's no say it louder. There's no verb. There's no benefit. We could go on and on. Um, Video storytelling with the pros, creativity on it. Again, it's not, it's not mindless, it's just wrong. You know, there's energy and effort that went into it. They just didn't have the, <laughs> they didn't have the, the, the uh, commandments in front of them. Uh, the number one source for Tennessee court decisions on point with your cases since 1976. The number one source of, uh, for Tennessee court decisions on point with your cases, good headline or bad headline. Well, say it louder. I guess depending on your audience, I don't even know what that means. Yeah, okay, well, uh, it doesn't matter about your audience because it's a bad headline. Because there's, number one, there's no verb, as John had mentioned. There's no verb there, but there's no benefit. To be the number one source, I don't care because 
what does that do for me? What's the benefit? There's no benefit. It may be the number one source. Whatever the, whatever the number one source could possibly mean, I don't know. It could be the best selling, but that's not a benefit either. I don't care. I, I might want the worst selling one that really helps me do something. So this one, there's no promise. There's no benefit. These are, these are, I didn't make these up, guys. This is real. And these are from content providers just like you uh, and like everybody here. This is what they're putting out. You don't need to do this. You can do better. Paperless safety data sheet management. Paperless safety data sheet management. How to assess and employ new electronic tools. Good headline or bad headline? Woman with the, black, the woman in black. Bad headline. Yes, and it, it's, a, it's a really, <laughs> it's hard to read. I had to read it twice out loud. I still didn't, I'm still not sure I got the emphasis correct. Bad headline, thank you. Delivering the ultimate customer buying experience with e-commerce analytics. Good headline or bad headline? Who said it? It's her. <laughs> did, did, did I hear you say bad? Yeah, and why is it bad? That's right. There's no, there's no benefit. And by the way, you know, delivering is not a, it's a, it's a form of a verb that is a noun. So it's not a, it's a gerund. So it's not a, it's, we have no verb there. We don't know what the ultimate customer service, it's, you know, it's like ad speak. It's like, it's really, really great. Really, what, what does that mean? There's no tangible benefit, no emotional benefit. There's no, no, uh, no tangible benefit. We don't, we don't know what the ultimate customer buying experience is and we don't know why it would benefit us. We don't have any idea. How the all makes all models business plan can succeed in your service department. I can tell, I'll give you a little background on this. The all makes all, 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 makes all models is a business, uh, it's, a, it's a business model for, a, for a, a car dealership that does repairs, like your Chevrolet dealer. Instead of only servicing Chevrolet, you adopt a business model that says, I will service all automobiles, all automobile makes. So this the all makes all models business plan can succeed in your service department. Good headline or bad headline? Bad headline. And why is it a bad headline? Perfect. If you, if you would say, grow your service department by 50%, then it would be a good headline. But succeed, it's, it's, it's vague. It tries, to, it tries to offer a benefit, but it doesn't deliver a benefit. Okay? You can do better than that. Designing media websites that work, creating a website for the best website experience. This company is here at this conference. But yeah, <laughs> would it be more of a benefit? So, uh, um, is that Michelle back there? Good headline or bad headline, Michelle? Bad headline. Bad headline. Because? Um, no yeah, no, no real benefit. They use website three times. <laughs> it's a waste of it. Poetry, it ain't, okay? Um, designing website, websites, that, media websites that work, what does that mean to work? Mine kind of works. I, think, I hope it could work better. I wish somebody would tell me how. But creating a website for the best, best, super, unsupported superlatives, don't use them. You're not the best. Doesn't matter that you're the first, uh, unless you can tie it to some overwhelming benefit. But, you know, um, increase subscription revenues by 15% with customer retention best practices. Good headline or bad headline? <laughs> yeah, what? Fifteen percent increase? Come on. There's a, quantifiable There's a quantifiable benefit. Thank you. I mean, uh, look. This uh, we're going to look at the actual copy that goes below this, and we can we can dig in. It's it's a good headline. Look, it could be a better headline. Lots of at least it gives it offers a benefit, and it uses numerals. Come on. 
Give them a break. <laughs> Only Media Pro lets you build precisely. So this is uh, one of ours. Uh, it, it's for a media directory to help PR people create media lists. Only Media Pro lets you build uh, precisely targeted media lists with pitching tips for under $1,700. Uh, good headline or bad headline? Woman right here in the front. I haven't forgotten about you. What? Bad because? OK, but it, it, it does have the word you in it. It lets you build. Anybody disagree with her? Anybody want to speak up in favor of this? G give it a five on the scale of 10? It's not bad. It could be better. Build precisely targeted media lists with pitching tips for under $1,700. Yeah. It's, it's, it promises you precisely targeted lists. It promises you pitching tips, if you know what that, what that is. It helps you pitch the media, right? It gives you tips on how to pitch the journalists. And it's under $1,700. That's obviously, a, in, this, in this realm, it would be an advantage, OK? OK, well, we could move, move it around. Now you're getting technical on me, but we'll, I'll go with you on that. Move that to the back or cut it off. I, I'll, I'll take either of those improvements. All right, so I want to give you some direct, some direct response copy. We only have about seven minutes. Uh, so it should be a message from one person to another. If you, it has to be about the other person, OK? It has to be about you, all right? It has to be, and you're writing not to an audience of people, you know? All you public relations people, every public relations person who, all public relations people who uh, have experienced this problem will appreciate this solution. No, it's not about all public relations people. It's about the one public relations person who's reading it. Okay, avoid that. And by the way, um, you notice this with uh, if you ever do public speaking, you know, you are not talking to an entire audience, you're talking to one person at a time. You know, and they tell you, you know, make eye contact with every person in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the room. And if you really do it right, you hold it for X seconds or whatever, because it's from me to you, right? It's not about me to everybody, and I'm blinded to the, to the, to the humanness of each individual. Start with you. Use twice as many second persons as first persons. Start your first sentence of your copy with the word you. Write about the other person. Don't write about your product. Tell a story about the reader, not the product. You know? You got troubles right here in River City. That starts with T, and that rhymes with P, and that stands for pool. Name that. Name that. Thank you. Grab the reader by the lapels. Get to the point quickly and dramatically. You've got to, it's a, writing copy, right? Writing good copy is an intense experience, and it needs to be intense to the, to the reader. Okay, you've got to, you've got to engage him. This is writing great copy is not like, I got 15 minutes to get this thing done. Boom, 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 boom. You're not going to write great copy in 15 minutes. You got to think about it. You got to think about who is that person. You want to write it to one person. Generally, when you're writing copy, you want to think about somebody in your marketplace, somebody you know, right, a, a customer. And you want to write it to that person. You want to convince that one person. You want it's a sales pitch, OK? What can I say to convince that one person to do this thing that I want them to do? Make the reader nod, yes, that's certainly true. This has to do with credibility. They've got to believe it. You know, you say, you know, um, how many times have you, uh, have you sat in front of a blank sheet of paper having to write copy and you've only got 15 minutes to write it. It's discouraging, right? And you want people going, you got it. I, you're talking my language. You understand me. Pile on the benefits. Offer to solve problems. You start your headline promises a big benefit. And then you have sub-benefits uh, underneath that. And you're elaborating on the sub-benefits, like an outline, right? You've got Roman numeral one, A, B, C, D, E. That's, those are your sub-benefits. Pile them on. 
Avoid unsupported superlatives. We talked about this here. You're not the best. It's not the greatest website experience. Enough with the unsupported superlatives. People, people don't believe it. They won't believe it. In fact, it ruins your credibility. Include testimonials. They can tell the story more credibly than you can. Just a word on testimonials. Um, you don't want people saying, oh, this is the greatest publication on blah, 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 or this is the greatest resource for such and such. You want to say, this newsletter helped me decrease our product returns by 45%. This special report helped make me a hero in our next, at our, at our last board meeting, or our last client meeting. The publication, the content did something for me that was amazing. It, it delivered a tangible benefit. It made me feel great, made me, gave me a tangible benefit. That's the testimonial you want. And by the way, when you ask people for a testimonial, that, that, that's not what they're going to say. You have to interview them to get them to say that. You say, can you ever think of an example? You ask them several questions. Can you ever think of a time when blah, blah publication helped you, made a difference in your, in your practice, made a difference in your work life? Can you, ever, can you ever think of a time when Bulldog Reporter, our newsletter, can you ever think of a time when Bulldog Reporter helped you place a story in a major media outlet? Oh, yeah. I read, a, I read an article uh, that you guys wrote and helped me place a story in the Wall Street Journal. It was fantastic. My client loved it. That's your testimonial, right? Offer helpful advice or service. Tantalize the reader with useful information. Your language should be colloquial. Can you read it out? Can you read it aloud? No long sentences. It should sound like real people, real folks. And don't try to be clever. No jokes, no puns, and no ad speak. No, uh, no enterprise-wide solutions. You know. Um, okay. Uh, real quick, number one source for Tennessee court decisions on point with your cases since 1976. Tennessee appellate courts hand down 2,000 decisions each year, only 200 are published. Can you afford to miss one that affects your case? Don't, in your copy, you know, I gave you the igniter. It's an open-ended question. It's not a yes or no question. I don't, want a, I don't want a yes or a no. I want you to think about the answer, okay? Well, I, that could be great. Not yes or no. And this is, can you afford to miss one that affects your case? You know, probably the answer is, is no, which is what they want. But you don't want to ask that kind of question. Ask it would be, how, how would it be if I could assure you that you will never miss a case related to your current caseload? That's what you want to ask. Tennessee uh, Attorney's Memo is a comprehensive information system. We're not selling information. We're selling solutions. We're selling benefits. Don't promise information. I mean, it is information. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, the attorney's memo. I, I got it. It's, it's information. That's not the promise. Don't promise me information. Don't promise me news. Don't promise me coverage. How the All Makes All Models business plan can succeed in your service. Aftermarket retailers, those are independent garages, are making tons of money with this model, yet most dealerships continue to struggle. Learn the secrets of these dealerships. Uh, what, learn the secrets of those dealerships Successful, makes them successful with all makes all models. If you're not already convinced that this market has a lot of potential, consider just a few stats. Now, my friend here in the orange shirt uh, said, tell me I'm going to increase my sales by 25%. That's the benefit. This goes into a lot of copy about how many automobiles per family. No, I don't care about the uh, demographics of, of the automobile driving public. Tell me how I'm going to make some money. You made, you made me a promise. Success. Tell me how much money it's going to make. Get to the point. Uh, increased subscription revenues. We looked at this. We gave it a, I don't know, what, what did we give it? A seven or an eight on the scale. Acquiring new customers is costly. That's why keeping the, the customers you already have is critical to your recurring top line revenue. To ensure you aren't unnecessarily losing subscribers and their recurring revenue, your digital business should have a comprehensive customer retention strategy. The reader already knows this. You don't need to tell them what they need. In fact, your copy should not tell customer, tell readers what they need. Do not tell them that. You need this. You know, you walk into a shoe store, you walk into Nordstrom, you want to buy a new shoes, a pair of new shoes, and the salesman says, you know, you need these red pumps. Dude, 
you don't tell me what, I, what kind of shoes I need, okay? I'm going to buy what I want to buy. Help me buy what I want to buy. Don't tell me what I need to buy. And, um, but this entire first paragraph is a distraction. I'm reading, I'm reading this ad because of the headline. I already know that I need renewals. I know that I want renewals. I know customer retention strategy. Let's just get into it and tell me what the, um, tell me how you're going to do it. You know, give me a, give me a clue. Make me want it. You know, six ways to do this, four ways to do this. You don't have to give away the store. Just tantalize me with it. Don't, you don't have to give me the deep background. Designing digital meb websites that work. Um, look, guys, I am, uh, I have run out of time. This is almost my last slide. I think you get the point. Um, pregnant women at work. I'm just going to move um, to the end here. So I want to leave you with one last thought, and that is I brought this up at the beginning, which is I've given you all the rules. You can print them out. You can reformat them. You can put them in on your, in your cubicle, on your desk. You can do that. But you, have to, you and your colleagues have to do it every day when you're, when you're writing copy. That's the trick. Here. So what I, uh, so how do you, and I've, uh, this is something that has frustrated me because it's easy for me to tell you all the rules and give you the list, but how, how can I help my clients do it? And here, here's the clue. This, this will make it, uh, this will tell you one step closer to, to integrating it, um, but you still have to do something. That's the problem. Um, but uh, the best way to do it is to have a check in, and I alluded to this earlier, a check and balance within your organization. Who is checking the subject lines that your team is writing? Who's, who's holding them up against the, or who's telling them, before you give me the subject line, I'm going to be looking at the, uh, at the Sinkinson subject line rules. So do me a favor. Unless you've, unless you've followed seven of those rules, don't bring me the subject line. Because I'm going to be looking at it, and if you don't meet seven of those criteria, I'm going to send it back to you. You have to check them. You have to check the headlines. Just say, it, it doesn't take long to do it. And the more that you have people, that you hold people to those standards, the more it will become integrated, and the more they will do it. So good luck with all of that. Better results, uh, great subject lines, great headlines, great copy every single time. I wish you the best. Thank you.